One evening, as I was walking back to my car through Trinity Churchyard, I saw the man, Jimmy, and the younger of his two friends sitting on a bench at the far end of the garden, by the gate that led out to Cuthbert Street, where I would have to pass them to get to the car park. It had rained earlier, and the bench must have been wet, but they didn't seem to care. They were sharing a bottle of cider and smoking cigarettes when they saw me. The young man stood up and lurched forwards with one hand outstretched. Spare some change, he asked, his voice a little slurred from the drink. I shook my head and kept walking towards the gate. Jimmy was still seated, but he looked up at me as I approached and gave me a hard smile. Spare us some change, mister, he said quietly, insinuatingly. I shook my head again. I know you, don't I? he said more loudly, getting to his feet and peering into my face. I stopped as he blocked my way. I don't think so, I answered. Now, let me pass. It was a mistake, of course. He was looking for confrontation. Somewhere, at the deepest level of his being, there was an expectancy of contempt, a desire to be confirmed in the belief that the world was against him. He was looking for an opponent, and he was looking for the first indication of repugnance or disgust, so he could strike back and show his defiance. Not that I was concerned. I had carried small weapons and tools in my coat for years, for use in just a situation. I had no intention of becoming a victim, especially the victim of vermin like these. That evening, I had a Stanley knife in my pocket, and I was ready to use it. No need to be like that, he said. The other man had turned back and stood behind me, watching, waiting for his cue. You could just show people some respect. Jimmy continued, and the other man echoed him quietly, gloatingly. That's all I ask. It's not too much to ask, is it? I waited.